los universos. Lo mismo que hace nuestro Padre Sol. This is the Temple of the Moon at Teotihuacan. Notice how the staircase construction is completely different from the rest of the structure. And then at the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, notice the large blocks that appear to have originally been in place, but now are damaged and on the ground. And then we have the massive Pyramid of the Sun. Again, notice the staircase is different in construction than the rest of the building. And as we approach the Pyramid of the Sun, we see that the staircase is made of cut, cube-like blocks, where the rest of the building is made of simple volcanic stone. And here we see the Pyramid of the Sun from the Pyramid of the Moon, massive in scale. And again, as we go backwards, we see the immensity of the Pyramid of the Sun amongst the smaller temple structures. Now, at the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, again, the staircase is made of cut blocks. And yet the rest of the construction is really quite simplistic, except for those large cut stones there. This is a typical staircase located at Teotihuacan of mixed material. And one very large stone here that clearly was originally used in the construction, but now isn't. And now we are approaching the Temple of the Moon, or sorry, the Pyramid of the Moon, and this gives you a look at most of the entire work located at Teotihuacan, about two hours outside of Mexico City. This is a standard staircase, very crudely made. And here in behind, again, the fine cut blocks of the staircase at the temple of Quetzalcoatl. Compare it to the other rather crude construction that is around it. And again, here we focus in on the staircase at the Pyramid of the Sun. Cut cube-like blocks. And looking down, we're going to see the typical kind of staircase. Lots of mortar and crudely put together. We are now at Tula which also is about two hours away from Mexico City, but in a completely different direction. This is where we find the so-called Atlantean statues, which was a term made up by a 19th century British or American writer. We'll actually see that these statues have nothing to do with Atlantis, that was just a fancy term used and now unfortunately has stuck. Again we can see that cube-like stones seem to be, have been recycled in parts of the staircase and now we approach the structures or statues themselves made of very hard basalt stone which is not found locally. You see that each one of these statues is made up of at least four different sections. 
They were found by archaeologists uh, having fallen down, likely the result of the Spanish invaders. And these are called the Atlantean warriors. Indeed, they were warriors, but they were warriors of Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent. Again, having nothing to do with Atlantis. And then this curious object carried in the right hand. Now, some people have claimed that um, it's some kind of laser weapon. In fact, it was likely a very early small type of crossbow. And here we have detail of the figures themselves. Notice the headdress is a mixture of feathers and serpent scales. So that's the plume serpent. And then here we get a close-up of a relief carving of one of the warriors likely of the Toltec civilization. As the sun goes down, we get our last glimpse of Tula. Notice these protruding knob-like things. These stones look like they lock together, one on top of another on top of another. And in the left hand, the warrior is carrying a bundle of small arrows to go with the little crossbow. That is local oral tradition. So we'll be going back to Mexico in February 2019. Thank you.